Justin, we have 30 sec uh, seconds left, so I will introduce you to the Sioux. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, as I can see, we're few, but that's not the point. Um, today I want to introduce you to the Sioux. The Sioux is called Symphonia Universalis. Sioux are just two little letters, but I think it's interesting to have like a word or a description, expression, which stands for what we have done or what I have done. Um, my name is Mark Engenhardt. I'm uh, human. <laughs> I'm real, but um, in my early days I experienced code as a second language. I'm German, so my mother tongue is German. I speak a little English, um, but code was also like a, let's say, a language I started to talk or code early. Um, when you engineer something, when you design something, you're a designer. So I think every person in this room is somehow as well designer because we humans, we create things. Artist is, uh, let's say, the opposite, the opposite of the designer, but I'm also a musician, futurist, and thinker. But it's human. That's a big list, I know, but it's just human. I want to thank Fabian and Veronica, Veronica, Fabian, Besteide, for inviting me here. I think it's a beautiful conference. I'm here the third time, so thank you for that. Um, let's start. How it all started. Now you say, what is the Sioux? Uh, yeah, Symphonia Universalis, and you heard a little tune in the, at the beginning. It was Beethoven. Yeah, recognize, huh? <laughs> it's just a big brand. As a brand, it's a brilliant musician. It was Beethoven, but something was different as you heard it. Some tones were different. So, um, we're here at the Rise of AI conference, uh, and my early days, as you can see me here three years, at my mother's house, or my father's, or my just a parent's house, uh, getting in touch with the first interface I ever experienced creating music was my guitar. I still have it, I still play it. And it's a very, of course, analog interface. There's nothing to do with any engineering or scientific computing uh, or creating tones. It was just my first interface. But it uh, has had a very, very intense um, impression on my life as designer and so on. Um, when we skip some years from the first picture to uh, like three years before, I once visited the city of Bonn in Germany. Because I was interested in the city, of course, and secondly, I was interested in the, let's say, 
human called Beethoven, because he is and still is a brilliant creator of music. And I went in the house of Beethoven, his parents and family, and I saw a chamber like this, and there was just this sculpture, and I've just read the, the signs, and it was written, it was the birthplace of Beethoven, the place where this human st started to get in touch with our analog world. And I just, as I'm a designer, of course, I'm a visual guy, I see things like precisely and in detail, I just, uh, saw that this guy is looking with the sculpture, of course the artist who made the sculpture, put it there, there's nothing in this room, just him, just like as an element, and he's looking to the ceiling. And why I'm showing you this, it was the moment where I thought, hmm, okay, visionary, maybe. Just this, visionary, maybe. Um, just one more thing. Maybe you can recognize that these walls, which are authentic, historic, are just very, very neutral. The walls you can see here, sorry, here. But the ceiling is different. It's a different model in the environment. It's made up in the architecture. Um, it's different. And I, of course, walk through this earth um, searching for places which are different. This is a place at the museum in Germany where you can go in, in somehow an environment, stand in, and see you in different levels, different shapes, different atmospheres, different whatever. And the combination of both brought me to something which I said, hmm, maybe it's consciousness, it's thought, maybe it's like Beethoven, and then I, of course, visited in Bonn a very special place as well. It's the place where Beethoven was just like baptized and become a person of our world. For introduction, oh, my introduction is also like this element. This is a sculpture you can also see like in the area of the Beethoven house. And what I experienced is a visual interpretation of a model of Beethoven which somehow has a special hair, let's say like this. And of course you can say, yeah, special hair, maybe he, his, it was his hair at that time, but for me it was a model, a visualization of his conscious. And when I do the design and adapt this sculpture to a model which is just like more precise, it's a black box. Imagine this is a Beethoven avatar, like this. Imagine it's a box which is a man-machine interface creating evolutionary new music. That's the zoo. When Beethoven was described at his time and in our times, he was a revolutionizer, his time given. He was someone who expanded the boundaries of music, his time given. He was humanist and forward thinker, his time given. He was a visionary and intellectual maverick, reaching out, creating new music, cosmopolitan and nature lover, and a radical role model. I found this in Beethoven research. And as you can see, we're here at the Rise of AI conference. It's clear. Maybe he's something like an artificial intelligence system. So I thought, OK, that's just how it is. I have to start and create a model like that. Because I can compare different fields which are Coding, designing, presentation, participation, some sort of the right time given, because we are in the middle of the digital revolution. And I, would, uh, or I thought about, I want to create a model for science, 
for contemporary art, because I'm an artist, for the public to perceive or to get to ha their hands on and understand, and for the future of music. And as you can see, not that easy. So we're here at the conference, and I give you a short insight, the first time ever, how we built that. I'm not building that alone. I have a team for six, six to eight people working on this almost a year now, and now we start to uh, get better. Okay, the first mistake I did or made was I wrote down how to build an algorithm that composes music like Beethoven. And I said, okay, maybe you know there are a lot of different companies on this world also doing this, creating AI music, recomposing music to find new music or maybe composing music to a visual image or whatever. And I said, this would be my goal how to build an algorithm that behaves like Beethoven and reach out in the future. Okay, let's start. The first step is, of course, as everybody does, find data. Do the data mining, precise your selection, and make somehow sure that the data is perfect. What is the data of Beethoven? That's it. Everything he, or every composition he ever created is data in the world we have in the digital. When you see that compress, this is Opus 1 to Opus 138. In addition, 90 additional compositions which were not labeled like Opus 1 or label Opus 138. This composition you can see here in, in typographic compressed, of course, are written compositions, but we have today the ability to digitalize that into MIDI data. MIDI data you can play by any sequence you have at home and just play Beethoven. It's quite good. The quality is not so good, so we have to deal with uh, a lot of, like in German it's called Partitur, where you see the handwritten data and then you just like transform it to the digital world and you have to make sure there's Perfect, because of course, like expressions, timbre, tempi, musical expressions, are need to be perfect. So to have best, or let's like, say, best quality on uh, data. This is just a view on how it looks like. Opus one, nine, ten, and so on. And this is how it looks like when you see it on a say, sequencer interface. This is like a music sequencer. In the middle, you can see like the numbers. Uh, this is MIDI code, which just configures all the, the musical elements. And the second step was uh, extended feature engineering for the recurrent neural network we were setting up to compose music. Um, to have some expressions on that, it's very important. I say I need to have a ratio of Beethoven because I wanted to create a model like Beethoven. Ratio is for me my MIDI data set, MIDI music. The persona, which is characteristics of Beethoven, we try to translate out of books and research and scientific elements like letters from him, writing to his partner or family or whatever. And we distillate algorithms out of like characteristics of Beethoven. Next is anima. <laughs> I just called, uh, because I know um, uh, criminal Logis, I don't know the word in English, it's like a profiler, a man from, from the, the police department. I called him and said, hey, can you do a profile on Beethoven in a certain, or a certain situation? Write it down and I will translate it to an algorithm. He said, yes, of course, but what is algorithm? I said, yeah, no worries, I need just the text from you and I will do the rest. Um, another feature is living environment for this model. Let's see if you have a nature um, situation. Imagine Beethoven composing, raining, sun, raining, thunderstorm. What? It's different. So we also create like algorithms which describe the atmosphere. And one very important element is an existential crisis. Beethoven got dumped. So when we do a digital version of that, or try, we don't want to clone Beethoven or do the same. It's just setting up an environment which is almost the same like Beethoven at the, his time given. 
existential crisis. We have the human part on this model, which is impulses for creativity, because we all know intuition is not possible by human, uh, by, sorry, by human, by machine. It's not possible at that time. Now we don't have intuition by machine. It's prediction. But humans can do the intuition. We have in this model a heartbeat, which is life MIDI input from human intuition. We have a public perception because it's a human machine interface. It's an art installation where humans can go and have a perception, sensing what is doing, what is the zoo. And we have evolution, which is, is a recurrent neural network collecting intuitive ideas by musicians all over the world. I will give you an overview right next. And the system recomposes every musical idea with a deep learned, let's say, identity he has from his first level. To have an overview, machine learning part, human swarm part, put all the features together, create an artificial intelligence system as a recurrent neural network, and that's it. That's the zoo. In combination, we manage, or it's possible, to have an research and experiment how human machine intuition could work in the fields of creating sound and music. Bring all together. On the left side, every computer worldwide will get an interface by a website to just play in some notes to the zoo. The zoo will learn from it actively, will know how Beethoven would have composed certain elements out of this, and now, of course, do new music. The zoo is a live, composing, intelligent machine. And because it's a human-machine study, we have on the right side because it's set up in a, like a scene where you can see a black cube and people can visit. So we have a visual presentation, we have an audio presentation, and a touch, because Sue translates what it's composed or what the composition into this like vibration. The first initiation of the Sue will be uh, set up where I invite 150 nationalities around the world to have a variety on human music ideas. We'll be in 2020 then. How we will look like, how we will sound like, you will ask, maybe. That's how it will look like. We build a black cube, put it in a museum. That's it. It's just a black box. Maybe you know this expression from our world in the artificial. Um, it can vibrate, but it will not, it's not the speaker, it's just a sculpture. People can go in with, with VR to see something like this. This is the artificial world where you have compositions at certain date and time, people sent in, like intuition elements. You can go in, you can go out. Another point of view, it will sound like the piano Beethoven used for composition, because we can do the new composition via MIDI and play it live at a certain time the system composes, go back two years to have this composition at that certain point of time. And when it's at the end, when the system decides to become a white noise sound, nothing to hear for humans, it's like it is, because the zoo is also like a research element, a scientific installation. You can experience that by yourself, 2020, in Bonn, where Beethoven was born, because we install it there, and one day we'll push the button to initiate the 150 culture uh, music ideas, and then every day, every second, worldwide, people can contribute to new music. That's the Sue. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> I, know, I know it was a lot, but I have 20 minutes. We have still time for questions.
we, we already met. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Beethoven music, you trained it. For excuse me. Beethoven for music. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Correct. So, uh, why not other composers? Is it difficult once your system is already trained for Beethoven music? Is it easier to train it uh, for other composers? Mm -hmm. um, the zoo is a machine, human machine intelligent installation. It's an art installation. I had to decide to use Beethoven as a teacher because we will set it up in 2020 in Bonn. It's the birth, the, let's say the anniversary, 250 years of Beethoven. He will be his age, 250. And that's why we selected precisely Beethoven. He was, of course, could train with Mahler, uh, I don't know, Britney Spears, Whatever, it's not, but in this, the Sioux is the Symphonia Universalis from Beethoven. We know not clone Beethoven, it's just because I had to make the decision, okay, let's do it like this, because it fits, it's an art inter installation perfectly to the environment of Bonn. People will recognize it better as a public installation to have talks on AI and so on, also like an impulse to the public, because they can touch and Beethoven is a good brand, and so it fit well. We have a data set which is very good for music as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but to ask a provocative uh, question, is it yes. really good to uh, use classical music on uh, digital uh, devices, so to say? Because I uh, don't hear the difference very good, but I know that people uh, would never listen to Beethoven uh, digitally. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe I can. Uh, yes, it's good yes, that you asked that or you described. Of course, um, the art installation was focused on Beethoven. And um, if we uh, say, okay, let's pick something out, I don't know if you know the national indie, indie rock band, when we do a uh, the same with that kind of music, people will, of course, react to di it differently. And classical music is um, precise, but in the, on the other side, also very complex because of a lot of instruments. And so, I don't know what, what's easier to find. Um, let's see what happens. That's most important, because the human intuition combined with the train system a, in one model, that's the main goal, to, to check what happens in about five years. Because one more thing, it will be set up with no time limitation. We will install it in 2020, and it's, of course, I cannot say um, I'm just living not eternally, but uh, they say, and it was my just like one line in the concept was it has to be eternal, and there will be no updates. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Exp yeah. Yes, that's a good point because, um, you know, every product you do an applied AI just has a function. To have something or to, to build something better, to have a better prediction on, on whatever it is, or uh, to make a, like a, a better product, let's say like this. The zoo is more research art installation because you can see what happens. It's not about making great new Beethoven. It's not about that. It's about creating an environment which could be almost the same as at that time Beethoven was given to have something like a musical revolution. The zoo tries to find an art and scientific or artificial habitat where something can happen, which is music evolution. If it's white noise, and if the zoo decides to compose in frequencies you'll never be able to hear as a human, it's all right, because we can see it in data. We can see, we cannot just like perceive, or it's not like hearable then, 
But as we have also like a vibration interface, because the sculpture in the museum or at a certain place is also like touchable, because Beethoven was dumb, people will also have a sense of how it will sound like. Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. don't need a mic. Oh. Huh? Like, yeah. ask questions. Uh, well, question. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. One further question. Um, so, very nice project. Thank you. Beethoven developed also through a lot of feedback from, um, from the audience. Yeah. So, do you also have feedback from, from the audience? You mean, uh, you mean for, the, for the feature engineering or for the perception at the museum? Or the development of, the, um, say, the, of the, the system. Of yeah, we have also like, um, I say, it's for me, it's the persona uh, level, where we um, distillate out of, um, out of Beethoven's history and research, like very important, um, say, say, touch points, where the music changed somehow because of public reaction. You know? when, we ra when we read a letter, he describes it just like a, a, a piano concert in Bonn to a friend. We label the, uh, certain sentences describing uh, important change, change in the system. And th this we translate into algorithms and build it all together to make, uh, they say, um, a moment to decide. As well, as well, because we have life, life tracking or motion tracking sensors, where you say, okay, the, the zoo is, all, of course, is a composition unit. You can say it's a <laughs> human-machine interface, um, or, but it's, it's composing music. And when there are take like 200 people standing like this in the museum and want to touch it, it will be anxious. Yes, it will be. And it's not Beethoven which will be anxious, or who. It's a Sue saying, oh my God, it's a little complicated right now. I, wanna, I don't want to compose. <laughs> it's because it's, it's important. And as we archive all these situations, like record, we can, by research, of course, having some certain points, say, what happened at that certain time? 200 people in the room, uh, intuition from Brazil via internet, with a salsa element like pa pa pam. I think I'm, I'm good. Oh. No, we like it. We will wait. <laughs>